China ramping up its tech war with the U.S., a Chinese company claiming its product can outsmart ChatGPT, whether the two superpowers stand in the battle for tech dominance, and how did American companies actually help Beijing's rise? We dive into that and more in today's episode. What do you think of the race for AI? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The U.S.-China tech war is heating up. Chinese tech giant Baidu is touting its own artificial intelligence model, saying it's outperforming ChatGPT in several key areas. ChatGPT is a popular chatbot that recently took the world by storm. Using AI technology, it can help users write articles, emails, and computer code. And from Alibaba to Tencent, big tech companies in China are coming up with their own rival products into the ring. It's unclear if Baidu's claim is true, but Beijing is aiming to outcompete Washington in artificial intelligence by 2030. Just like nuclear weapons in the 60s, artificial intelligence is critical to the battle for dominance. Whoever takes the lead in AI will seize a major advantage on future battlefields. Right now, the U.S. holds the lead in artificial intelligence. But experts warn China is catching up in some areas. A report from Harvard says China has overtaken the U.S. in some AI technologies, from facial recognition to drones to 5G. But there's a twist. China's AI technology can't work without semiconductors from select American companies like NVIDIA and AMD. And Washington is already reigning in China's progress and its military development by slapping restrictions on what can get sent to the country. The U.S. tightened export controls to make it harder for China to get some of the most advanced AI and supercomputing chips from the U.S. But Washington's moves to rein in China means companies like NVIDIA could see thinner profits, a loss of over $400 million. To cope, NVIDIA came up with an alternative AI chip. It's not as advanced, meets the U.S. restrictions, and can be sold to China. It's not just NVIDIA. Microsoft has also lent China a hand. The tech giant's research arm in China has been critical for Beijing's rise in artificial intelligence. Microsoft's research lab in Beijing has cultivated many talents for China's AI industry. Even for OpenAI, the company that developed ChatGPT is calling for engagement with China. CEO Sam Altman stressed the importance of American and Chinese researchers working together to counter the risks of AI systems, saying China has some of the best AI talent in the world and that he hopes Chinese AI researchers will make great contributions here. Beijing may have a new use for AI, quelling protests. The technology has allowed Chinese police to detect banners and the people unfurling them. At the same time, a recent video unveiled a lesser-known side of China's law enforcement personnel. Here's more. The banner detection AI, known as Jin, was launched in 2021 and was developed by Dahua Technology. The security camera company is now on multiple sanction lists in the West, including the US, UK, and Australia. US surveillance research firm IPVM first covered the system, citing a demo from a now archived webpage run by Dahua. The description reads, if a person holding a banner is detected within the camera field and lasts for a certain period of time, an alarm to police will be generated. The face of the banner holder also gets recorded automatically. The demo was billed as a solution for social safety, a term frequently used by Chinese authorities to justify crackdowns on civilians. In communist China, banners often carry the call of rights activists and persecuted faith groups. Most famously in 2022, a man hung a banner on an overpass in Beijing, bearing the words, No lockdown, we want freedom. The act set off a nationwide wave of protests against the regime's COVID-19 controls. The man was arrested on the spot and his whereabouts remain unknown. Despite the high-level surveillance on citizens, some of the CCP's law enforcement officials seem to be slacking off in their duties, contrary to the party's so-called serving the people slogan. In a recent video, a city leader paid an unannounced visit to a district police station. The man was allegedly the police chief of Lianyonggan, a seaport city in northeastern China. 
In the video, the plainclothes police leader approached the firearms room, where the officer was caught lying on a bed smoking. He was berated for not dressing properly and for not carrying his weapon. The police chief stepped out. He pointed to the front door, seemingly unhappy that the duty room was empty. He then inspected the registry office and kitchen, asking why no one was on duty. Despite his criticisms, online comments on the video have questioned the clip, some users accusing the official's visit of being just for show. That's because he only took aim at low-ranking staff on the ground, but spared the senior members upstairs who are truly in charge. The U.S. is asleep at the wheel as communist China tries to topple America. This, a stern warning from presidential hopeful Nikki Haley in a speech on Tuesday. She also outlined how she would handle U.S.-China relations if elected president. Here are the highlights. Communist China is the greatest threat to American security and prosperity by far. Presidential hopeful Nikki Haley on Tuesday addressed the threat the Chinese Communist Party poses to the U.S. It has stated its goal of diminishing American influence in the world and replacing it with its own. The Chinese Navy is especially concerning. Less than 10 years ago, it was about the same size as ours. Today, it has the largest fleet in the world. She also called for Washington to drastically limit ties with its geopolitical foe to address a dramatic rise in fentanyl deaths in the United States. The former South Carolina governor is currently polling only in the single digits. She's recently been criticizing other Republicans' policies more directly. According to her, former President Trump focused too much on trade with China while being too friendly with the country. Even the trade deal he signed came up short when China predictably failed to live up to its commitments. But she did say that Trump was right about China's trade abuses and that it's still a problem to this day. Haley said she plans to defend the U.S. from China by strengthening the U.S. economy and the military. Another foreign billionaire setting foot in Beijing, Bernard Arnault, chief of the luxury brand LVMH, kicked off his first trip to China. The French business magnate was spotted at several malls in Beijing Tuesday. He was reportedly inspecting stores under his company's ownership. Arnaud has an estimated net worth of $234 billion, making him the world's second richest man following Tesla CEO Elon Musk. LVMH is the parent company of 75 luxury fashion brands, including Christian Dior, Louis Vuitton, Tiffany & Co., and Fendi. The company saw a 17% jump in sales in the first quarter this year. That's as Chinese consumers return to luxury shopping after the regime ended its draconian COVID-19 lockdowns. The nation was home to one of the world's largest luxury goods markets leading up to the pandemic. In 2019, luxury sales in China accounted for around 35 percent of the global market. Heading into 2022, that number was cut nearly in half. But the momentum seems to be picking back up this year, as the public's appetite for luxury brands continues to grow in China. Arnaud is the latest in a string of billionaires to set foot in China. Earlier this month, Chinese leader Xi Jinping rolled out the red carpet for former Microsoft CEO Bill Gates. Gates met with Xi at a state guest house in Beijing, where the regime's leadership offers receptions for foreign dignitaries. That happened just a few weeks after Elon Musk's trip to China, where he was welcomed by several state officials. Tesla recently announced plans to build a new battery factory in Shanghai. As the West seeks to reduce supply chain reliance on China, the nation's leaders are coming up with different solutions to lure in investors. Chinese officials are also telling foreign companies to make up their own minds instead of following what their governments are saying about China. On the other hand, the regime recently raided the offices of several foreign consulting firms, raising fears about the business environment for foreign firms operating there. 
A group of American social media influencers facing backlash after a recent trip to China. They were invited to tour a Xi'an factory in China's southern manufacturing hub. The influencers showered praise onto the Chinese clothing company during the visit. But many online suggest they were shown a false picture of what's really going on. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has more. Multiple tags say, need your help. A social media influencer told her half million followers on Instagram that she's more confident than ever in her partnership with Xi'an after visiting the company's factory in Guangzhou, China. Another that toured the factory said she was pleasantly surprised. But is the company as ethical as it claims? The factory was one of thousands that Xi'an uses. The fast fashion retailer is accused of using forced labor in its clothing supply chains. A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers sent a letter to the chair of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in May, claiming there are credible allegations of Xi'an using underpaid and forced labor. U.S. senators penned a letter to Xi'an's CEO earlier this year over concerns of the company using cotton from China's Xinjiang region. A menswear writer on Twitter took issue with the influencer's endorsement. He says in his post that he can't help but feel that these influencers were chosen to make Xi'an look progressive to a Western audience, while the company runs a sweatshop in the back to make clothes out of polyester and lead. A CBC Marketplace investigation found some Xi'an items had high levels of chemicals in them, like lead. Health Canada issued a recall for a toddler jacket in 2021. It contained close to 20 times the legal amount of lead for a product allowed to be sold in Canada. Others online said the influencers are taking away from the work of investigative journalists and Xi'an factory workers who risked everything to film the reality of Xi'an's workplace conditions. An influencer strategist on TikTok accused the influencers of acting as PR crisis managers and advised them to be more cautious when accepting partnerships. Xi'an is valued at close to $100 billion and churns out over 6,000 new designs a day on average. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Major questions surrounding Xi'an come from the company's rock-bottom prices. Even now, Xi'an still claims to have zero tolerance for forced labor. It said in an email to the Epoch Times that it's committed to respecting human rights and adhering to local laws. An eye-opening event, Wagner's mutiny in Russia may have sent chills through Beijing. Though the incident faded quickly, analysts in China are left wondering, is Beijing too close to Russia? Just three months earlier, Chinese leader Xi Jinping told Putin about what he called changes not seen for 100 years, adding, quote, we are the ones driving these changes together. Putin agreed. So how is this weekend's Wagner uprising exposing risks for China? Let's zoom in. China is Russia's top trading partner and closest ally. At the heart of their relations is a shared opposition to what they see as a world dominated by the United States and the expansion of the NATO military alliance that threatens their security. But the weekend uprising has unsettled Beijing's leadership according to a top U.S. official on Monday. So um, this is something that um, for, the, for the Chinese side, this is, this is of great concern because they have um, huge interests in upholding stable and predictable relations with, with Russia. They have economic interests, they have political interests, and they want to cooperate with, um, with Russia at the, um, for instance, in regional forums and at the multilateral level. While Chinese state-run media cheered Putin's swift efforts to stamp out the rebellion, even some in China, where critical speech is tightly controlled, have started to question Beijing's bet on Russia. So um, a stable um, Russia is really important for China. And now they saw that um, Putin might not be um, uh, as stable as it appeared. Wen T. Sung is a political scientist at the Australian National University. I think she likely still prefers Putin to the alternatives in Russian politics. But Beijing now has more reasons to have more reservations and to become more transactional in its dealings with Putin's Russia. China has sought to play down the weekend's events and voiced support for Moscow, with which it struck a no-limits partnership shortly before Russia invaded Ukraine. Is the threat of a food shortage looming over China? 
Extreme heat and heavy rainfall have swept across central China, destroying wheat crops and farmland. In a video circulating online, an elderly farmer in Henan province burst into tears as he held germinated grains from his field. The 79-year-old makes his living through these crops, but he's now expecting to lose one-third of his wheat production. Local officials said the region's heavy downpour has wrecked havoc for the local wheat harvest, noting this year is by far the worst in the last decade. China is currently the world's largest wheat consumer, and Henan province is the nation's top source of the grain. What's more, a record-breaking heat wave is torching several major provinces in China. In Guangxi, fish swimming in rice paddies were boiled alive, and thousands of pigs suffered heat stroke and were killed. Becoming self-reliant on food supplies is now one of China's top priorities, and that urgency is higher now than ever before. Chinese leader Xi Jinping takes it as a matter of national security and has even set a standard that the nation must preserve nearly 300 million acres of farmland. But reality doesn't seem to be ruling in his favor. The uneven distribution of water between China's north and south is exposing certain areas to drought and others to flooding. Russia's war in Ukraine has also destabilized the nation's access to wheat and fertilizers. And the trade war with Washington is making it even more difficult for Beijing to get its hands on imported soybeans and other foods. Food shortages can often spark political instability. Last year, China imposed a strict COVID-19 lockdown on the city of Shanghai. Many households quickly ran out of food, but were banned from grocery shopping. Soon, people took their anger to the streets, and many called for a change in China's leadership. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Reports of a Chinese spy base in Cuba. U.S. officials say it's been operating since at least 2019, and Chinese troops could potentially be stationed there. Are we headed toward a second missile crisis? We hear from Frank Gaffney, the executive chairman and founder of the Center for Security Policy, for details. Cuba is a strategic asset that is being weaponized by the Chinese Communist Party. Plus, Russia and China expressed support for each other late Sunday night, but not in the thick of the Wagner mutiny on Saturday. Was Beijing rattled by the uprising? And what should the U.S. do about these recent changes? Now, whether that means that the Chinese will use uh, their influence or other capabilities to uh, help effect a change, uh, and perhaps uh, an even worse character than Putin, if that's possible, and unfortunately it is, uh, remains to be seen, of course. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.